Ghana means business brought to you by Goyle. Goyle, good energy. Ghana means business. Your story, our message. The Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, is a statutory public trust charged under the National Pension Act, 2008 Act 766, with administration of Ghana's basic national social security scheme. Its mandate is to cater for the first year of the three-tier pension scheme. The trust is currently the largest non-bank financial institution in Ghana. The primary responsibility of the trust is to replace parts of lost income of workers in Ghana due to old age, invalidity or death of a member where dependents receive lump sum payments. One social investment which is worth mentioning is a student loan scheme. This has made it possible for almost 600,000 students to go through tertiary education. SNIT has eight area offices, 50 branches, 23-day offices, and an agency spread throughout the country. Dr. John Ofori Tinkran is an investment banker, an engineer, and an academic. He was recognized as the Outstanding Director General of the Year 2018 at the 9th Ghana Entrepreneur and Corporate Executive Awards 2019 held at the Mepimpik Ambassador Hotel. He is currently the Director General of the Social Security and National Insurance Scheme. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goal Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goal Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Ghana means business. Your story, our message. Dr. John Oforitian Cry, who at the Bienvenue. Merci. I shall be sent monsieur. From St. Peter's <laughs> Secondary School, Kwaun Kwetia, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, technical advisor to His Excellency, Dr. Al Haj Baumia. When you were appointed the Director General of SNET, SNIT was in the news for all the re wrong reasons. You're, I think there were even some court cases which we shall not go into. Mm -hmm. And since then, somehow under your leadership, SNIT has evaded the radar of sensationalism in terms of news. Can you please share with us the major interventions and achievements, both operational, administrative, and investment that under your leadership, we've been able to bring such that now SNIT is moving along effortlessly and doing very well. You're right. When I went to SNIT, uh, we were in the news for all the wrong reasons. For me, one thing was very clear. And what was clear is that you've been thrown into a situation, you need to do a diagnosis and understand what the situation is. What you've inherited. What you've inherited. Mm. Can I have somebody who is independent come in and objectively look at what, what I have? have? So who did it for you? Uh, we hired, uh, we ended up hiring PwC, Pride okay. of House Coopers. Okay. But we went to tender sure. and everybody applied. All the, I think all the big four applied mm -hmm. and then, you know, PwC emerged the winner. Okay. Uh, and armed with that baseline audit, then you can take some decisions. Absolutely. Right? And so what became clear to me was from the audit was that, and also from what was generally going on, that public confidence in our institution was very low. Then I found out is also is that just 
as you look outside, you have to look inside. And looking inside, you find out that the service, a lot of the complaints was uh, related to service. People would, the narrative was, oh, as for SNET, you give them your money. When you are going to go and get it, they will give you something small. Mm -hmm. And even that one, it takes if you years. don't know that big man somewhere, you're not going to get it. And so it operationally, there were a lot of deficiencies. Correct. Right? Uh, and then the third thing was that, look, the erosion of that confidence was also being reflected in the management. That, you know... So morale I, was also low. Yes. And, and, and so people now, the, the public now needed to see that we, the management, we are not chopping their money. Because the narrative was, oh, it? those fat cats, those people, they go there and they chop your money. Right, from board chairman to uh, uh, SNED DG. When you become SNED DG, you are supposed to be rich overnight. That is true. Anna, that is true. Uh -huh. So, when all these things came to light, then we started to put together um, you know, measures to try and curb these things. So, on the concept of how do you get confidence back, you look inside to make sure that you are not doing anything wrong. True. And then you go out and explain, if you're not doing anything wrong, and that just that the people don't understand you or there's a perception, you have to go out and tackle that head so on. So a lot of stakeholder engagement. Thank you. Thank you. And we've done quite a bit of that on various fronts. We've done face-to-face -face, uh, engagements with some of our stakeholders. The last year we did one with the TUC where we went all around the country, Good. met their affiliate unions and regional uh, directors um, and district directors and just said, this is what we do. This is us. Ask your questions. And we answered a lot of their questions. And you led all this. Yeah. Wow. And so once you explain it to people and you are transparent and then they can ask you the questions and you can face the cameras and answer them, then the confidence starts to build. Then internally, I said, staff, all of us, put our shoulders to the wheel, because you want not only your children to be proud of you as working at SNET, rather than them telling you, oh, look at me, you work at SNET, that's the people who are chopping our money. Mm -hmm. You want to have an organization that you are proud of to be working in. True. So it's up to all of us to change the way we do things and offer that service. So I always tell my staff, you know, whenever I'm carrying a file, they want to carry it for me, and I said, no. The thing that you want to do to me, when that customer when that member, that client walks into this office, you go and carry their bags, right? So it's just an attitude change. Mm -hmm. And uh, also making sure that we are cutting down on waste and being efficient. So for example, we took bold steps to uh, educate st uh, the public and say, look, we've done this biometric registration. Everybody come and authenticate yourself to let us know that you're alive. If you don't do it, we will delete you from the pension payroll. And we did that. Okay. I mean, it's a bold step to delete, but we also made a contingency plan that if you wake up and know that, see that your money is not coming and you tell us that you had challenges, that's why you couldn't come, we'll come to you and authenticate you. Okay. I mean, that to date saved us almost about 72 million Ghana cities. Right? Why? Because there were people who were on the payroll who were- There were ghost names. Presumably dead. Dead, yes. Right. But That's because the, we pay into the account monthly, you know, it just keeps going, mm. right? And so uh, if you don't come and authenticate yourself, then there is no way for us to know that you are, are still alive. Are alive. Technology yes. has become a major enabler in the marketplace. And for SNIT, how have we leveraged technology to assist you in delivering your core functions, especially on the operational side? Right. As you've said, technology is key uh, in today's business. If you want to do new things, there are new things that you've got to do, and you can't do it yourself, right? So we realize that we have a lot of good applications programmers in-house, okay. you know. I'm an electrical engineer and computer scientist. I know a good programmer when I see one, mm -hmm. and I know the skills and what they can put together to make things work. So we're developing our own system. Uh, in-house? In-house. Uh, which is going to allow us to do even nicer things, and to do what we do now even better. Uh, for example, 
Um, I see no reason why, if you want a SNED clearance certificate, mm -hmm. you have to go to a SNED branch. Yes. And go through all and kinds of fill, stuff. Fill a paper manually. Yes. And all that it takes is that, well, uh, all you are asking is that you're an employer, mm -hmm. uh, you've paid all your social security obligations, and we should issue a certificate clearance. to that effect, right? So, yes. So you can, why can't you apply online? Uh, you go to your employer number, whatever, and attach whatever documents you have to attach. And then it comes to us, and we should be able to look at it and push a certificate to you on the other side. We should be able to do that. That right? would be great. Okay. Um, we ask you to give us your money for 15 years at least, or to 35 years. All through that journey, it shouldn't be opaque to you. You it should is be able totally to see. Opaque. Well, it shouldn't be. You should be able to come along with us all through the journey, see what monies are coming in and so on, and have an idea of what your pension will be when you retire. And you should be able to do it on, on, on this. As an app. It does, yeah. So we, we, we're thinking that we should be able to also get you like a mobile app, right? Uh, you have an employer who is in your village. Is it Ankasi? Ankasi. Right? And then he has, he or she has maybe three staff. And the social security contribution may not be that much, but then they have to travel all the way to your nearest branch. Yes. So you should be able to go online, you know, uh, fill out your forms, push it out there, get it validated. Go on the, whilst you're online, get your bank account and say transfer this money into the Senate account, and then you should be able to you should be able to do that, right? Excellent. Huh. So uh, those are things that we're looking to do. In-house. You know, In-house, and we'll do okay. all of that in-house. So that's, uh, technology is key for us, mm -hmm. and um, we are leveraging on what we have, building on it, and introducing new things to serve our clients better. That is great. Doc, yes. SNIT is governed by the National Pensions Act 2008 at 766, which, is, which stipulates a three-tier contributory scheme. Can you educate us about this? Yes, okay. So the current act, um, I think, recognize the need for pensioners to have, you know, multiple sources of pension uh, income and also to have some kind of a diversification in the way those incomes are generated. And so the, the, the law was amended to allow private pension funds into the space. So we have now tier so, one. So now we have the tier one, which is a, still a defined benefit scheme uh, managed by SNET. Okay. And then there is a tier two, which is a defined contribution scheme, right? So that one, your funds are not commingled with anybody's. Your fund go to a fund manager that you choose, your employer chooses, right? Uh, and your employer may choose that on the basis of maybe their investment strategy or whatever it is. And that money that you contribute, which is 5% of your salary, uh, your qualifying salary, is invested into that in your name. And so you should be able to get your statement of accounts and everything and see how that money is growing. So that's 5% plus 11%. That's 16. That's 16%. Mm -hmm. Then there is 2.5%, which is deducted and it goes straight to the NHIA. That's part of the funding scheme for the National Health Insurance. Okay. The benefit for that for SNET contributors is that when you're a SNET contributor and you, you don't, when you're going to renew your National Health Insurance, you, you don't pay the premium. Okay. Okay. So that is up to 18.5% of your salary, right? Mm -hmm. But then the tier three, right? So that's between the tier one and the tier two. 18.5% of your salary is gone, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's a tier three, which allows for an additional 16.5% mm -hmm. to go to another defined contribution scheme. Of right? your choice. Of your choice. Individual or company? Uh, individual. Okay. Right? So that's like a voluntary scheme you can decide yes. to do. Okay. Yes. And so that allows you to put away additional 16.5% tax-free before the taxman comes to, gets to take their cut. Uh, so that's the tier three. So all these three th uh, tiers together 
is supposed to give the worker an enhanced, you know, uh, um, pension, so to speak. Doc, based on what has happened during the implementation of Act 766, mm -hmm. if you had your way, which aspects of that would you have preferred to have changed? Um, Especially looking at it from the impact it has had on SNET. If we are able to, you know, take a second look at, at what age people retire uh, and get people to work a little longer, that would be good. Look, give... I thought you were going to say we should retire at 55. Now you want us to retire <laughs> at 90? <laughs> I don't want you to retire at 90. Okay. I think enough uh, energy left in the tank. Certainly. Uh, and probably you can do a lot of good work mm -hmm. uh, at 60. Yes. And so maybe we have to think about that. What that does is that it allows for a longer accumulation of funds. Mm -hmm. Of course, on the other side of the coin will be the youth who will say, oh, why don't you go on pension so that I too, I can get a job, That right? is true. Uh -huh. that is so, true. so uh, you know, it's you a conversation to. that needs to be had. True. And then uh, we have this peculiar thing, and I didn't get a chance to talk about uh, how the benefits under the defined benefit scheme is uh, calculated. But uh, it is calculated on two key uh, factors. One is how long have you contributed? How many months have you contributed? And then the other one is what is the average of your best three years of contributions during your whole working life? Mm -hmm. So the formula is going to pay you a percentage of the average of your best three years of contributions and irrespective of, for example, uh, what the other years of contributions are. So That's very good to know. Right. So, so you can imagine that you are, let's say you are a people teacher or whatever, you know, and you are earning these salaries, right, low. Then all of a sudden, there is an event, a legitimate event. You decided to run for MP. Yes. Then you maybe started earning an MP salary, right? Mm -hmm. And then you, there will be, your contributions will be paid on that. Mm -hmm. And then, let's say luck was not on your side. Uh, when you went for re-election, you lost. At that time, you were even getting close to 60. Mm -hmm. So you just did your four years. You lost the election. You went on pension. And meanwhile, you started contributing as soon as you finished the uh, uh, POSEC. Yes. Right? So you've been doing this thing since 1990 something. True. Right? And so you've done about, you know, 35 years mm -hmm. or so. Of contributions. Right? Of contributions. Mm -hmm. And you've earned the maximum percentage that you could get. And that the new law is like 60%, right? Okay. So all those little contributions that you made didn't matter. It just counted for the months. Every month that you contributed, we just kept So uh, if you are the maximum you can get for the 35 years yes. is 60%. Yes, under the new law. Okay. Right? Under the defined benefit scheme. Okay. Okay. Um, then that, that the average of your the, best three years. So then years. we go and look at your file and we say, okay, what is the average of your best three years? Clearly, we are going to pick out the time you were an MP, MP. Mm -hmm. right? And we're going to pay you that percentage adjusted for inflation every year for life. That's good. Now, if this is not generous, I don't know what generosity is, right? And in fact, you can even look back. So assuming that you didn't lose the election to when we are getting to 60, mm -hmm. but maybe you lost it maybe, I don't know, eight years back. So you had this flat line in boom, and then yeah, you close. You look back through your whole entire life. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so it it is quite that look back function is actually quite generous. That is true, right? And 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 so, the, what happens though is that towards the end of people's lives, when they know that this is how it's going to be calculated, 
then some people try to game the system. Well, I was just getting to that. You can that. imagine that, Certainly. Right? Because then they say, okay. Everybody wants to run for MP. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's either you're running for MP or, or and that's just an example, uh -huh. or I, if I am running my own uh, business, I can now start jacking up the salary that I take. Right? Mm -hmm. And that is illegal? Well, we, we, that's why I said legitimate events well so when, when business was booming my last three yeah, years and, and, and that's so so we, we look into all of that okay so that best three years can be quite costly especially when it happens at the end of somebody's career absolutely because you just got the money for just the last three years and that locks you in for life I mean, what investment did we use that money for? Exactly. Is what I'm saying. And, and that's why it's all commingled. So somebody else may have a different situation, you know, uh, you know, but somehow overall the portfolio has to be able to support that. So I would look at, really look at that best three years because it's a bit subject to abuse and maybe try and look at a longer term average, mm -hmm. perhaps the whole career average and so on. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goyle Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goyle Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Ghana means business. Your story, our message. Doc, I would be grateful if you could use this platform to let pensioners know that the quality of SNIT investments will meet their pension when they go on retirement. I'll answer that question a different way. SNIT investments alone is not the one that is going to make sure that your pension is going to be there and that we're going to be able to meet it. I say that because when you look at the contributions that people pay, the premium, the lifetime insurance uh, premium that people pay, and you weigh that against the benefits that they get, that SNET is obliged to pay, you find out that the benefits far outweigh the value of the contributions accrued with reasonable interest. And let me take a little bit of time to explain that for a second. Okay. For 11% of your salary, for between 15 years to 35 years at most, you get paid a certain percentage of your best three years as we've gone through for life, indexed with inflation. And not only that, whilst you are a contributor in active service, you could be 22 years old. As long as you've contributed 12 months out of the last 36 months, God forbid you are traveling to Ankasi and something happens and you became disabled. SNET pays you an invalidity pension for life. Like a worker's compensation. Yes. Okay. Many people don't I, know I, that. I, I never knew about it. And I that. have over a thousand people on my payroll today. If an event occurs, the unfortunate event that makes you disabled, unable to work, as certified by a medical board, occurs, okay. we look for 36 months and see that within the last 36 months, have you made 12 months of contribution? It has to be concurrent or it can be haphazard? No. It can be. It doesn't have to be continuous. Okay. 
And if you pass that 1236 test, you are deemed to have gone on pension. Okay. Whether you are 36 years. Whether you years. are 25, 26, 36, or 45. And you're going to be paid for and life. And you're paid for life or until such a time that you are deemed fit to return okay. to work. And in fact, when you deem fit to return to work, you come back and you don't start afresh. You continue from where you left off. And everything that we paid you before is just gone. This is very good. Right? This is very important. So you get that insurance. Mm -hmm. If you die in active service, SNET is going to treat you as if you retired and paid you a guaranteed pension, which is, in this case, uh, is under the new law, it's 15 years. Mm -hmm. It's going to pay you 15 years of entitlement to your survivor. Mm -hmm. So that's in the sense of a life insurance policy, okay. right? Contingent life insurance mm -hmm. policy. And by the way, you can join this thing up until the age of 45. At the age of 45, we don't care whether you have arthritis, mm -hmm. you have high blood pressure, no pre-existing conditions excluded. That's good. You are on it. You can imagine what that insurance premium would, would be, be. Absolutely. Right? Especially yeah. no pre-existing conditions. conditions. Yes. Right? So the contributions invested alone is not enough to pay everybody's benefits. Part of the funding of the scheme is what we call is like a generational transfer of value. Workers today whose contributions I collect today, I use part of it to pay current pensions. Is that best practice? Yeah. Okay. It's just a part of the funding scheme of the, of the, uh, of, of, is the so social security is a contract between generations. Okay. And that's why when you go to some countries, when they don't have young people working, they import your, uh, young people to come and work from other countries. I can think of countries in Europe. Absolutely. I'm sure including Canada, Germany, including so on, so Canada too. Right? Yes. Uh -huh. So on that score, I can assure contributors that we are doing all we can to maximize the return on their investments, right? Folks, you've heard the man himself, the Director General of SNET, Dr. John Oforitian crying, giving us the assurance that your investments are safe, your money is good, and the quality of his investments and the contributions are also in very steady hands. Right. Doc. Thank you for this assurance because this is very important. Now, what do you hope to be your legacy after you have left SNET? I'd like to be remembered as Director General came and probably got SNET to the point where uh, we didn't have to go and chase people for their money, but people saw enough value in it that they'll come and say, I want to be part of it. Internally with my staff, I think I would want them to as much as they think I'm very strict and I drive them very hard, uh, I'd like them to realize that you know, hard work doesn't kill. And also somebody who brought uh, some kind of uh, prestige to their institution. Um, if you tell me that uh, we are being perceived differently, I'm sure my staff are probably feeling it and they can now walk out with their chest up high and they say, you know, we work at SNET. So I think that's sort of maybe broad contours of what I like to be remembered for. Folks, this has been insightful. This has been phenomenal. This is candid talk. Truth well spoken, delightful, poignant, and piguant from the Director General himself of SNET, Dr. John Ofori Tinkrain. It has never been boring. It has always been exciting. On your favorite show, Ghana means business.